The latest update for Adobe Lightroom introduces a Denoise AI. But is it any good? Let's find out. A couple of days ago, Adobe updated Lightroom and introduced a Denoise AI. So we're going to take a look at that in this video now. I'm going to go through a little bit of Denoise example on here using a high ISO image. And I'm also going to finish editing the image in Photoshop. So if you want to see me do some quick editing, this video will be for you as well. So I took my Hillis DRD Jumper Spider out for a little photo shoot here. And here is a shot of him at ISO 100 on my Canon EOS. And you can see how clean the background is. There's no noise. It looks great. So whenever possible, I do try to shoot with a low ISO as possible. So there's no noise and grain. Sometimes, however, I do shoot at ISO 320. This is just to get a little bit more light onto the sensor, reduce the recycle time of my flashes. And again, it's very clean. Depending from image to image, sometimes I might do just a little bit of uh, noise reduction on there. But sometimes you get into a situation where you either haven't got your flash, so you've got to pull up your ISO to get the correct exposure. Or if you want a really quick flash recycle time, so you're doing focus stacking, then you can put your ISO up so that the power on your flash is reduced, thus creating a quick recycle time. However, the issue there is you're introducing noise and grain. So take a look at this image here. And this is, uh, again, my Hillis DRD jump is by you. And you can see the noise and grain in there. And this is shot at... 6400 but with modern denoise software this isn't an issue this new denoise option is a ai denoise meaning it's using artificial intelligence to remove the noise and grain from your image in order to use this you need to have the latest version of lightroom which is version 12.3 Alternatively, you can use Camera War version 15.3. So first thing I want to do is come down to the Detail tab and you'll see a new button that is called Denoise. Now if we click this little arrow here, we get to our original Denoise options that we have in Lightroom. And typically for something like this, I would use around 50, but let's see if we can remove the noise using the old method. Looking at that, that's okay. It's not perfect. You can still see the noise in the background. Um, the image has gone a little bit mushy as it would do. Now, typically I don't really use denoise in Lightroom previously. What I used to use was Topaz Denoise. Now the issue with Topaz Denoise is it's a third party plugin. I have to go into the Topaz to do my denoise. And again, we're having to pay separately for a third party option. Now, I opted to not update it last year. I thought, I want to see what happens. And as you can predict, because I haven't paid to keep it updated, it now doesn't work. Hopefully, this will fix everything. So let's take a look at the Lightroom Denoise now. We're going to click on this button here. So when we click on the Denoise now, which up, it comes to the Enhance Preview. In the left-hand side, we have the preview. We are currently zoomed in. We can zoom out. And what I want to do, I want to click somewhere where I have an eye, hair and background. So that's typically over the top left or top right of the spider's head. And what I find typically when it comes to denoising, particularly jumping spider images, is it has trouble around the fine hairs. You always get like this artifacting. Now Topaz Denoise did a fantastic job of that. I can't fault the software. I just don't like paying third party software to do some of the Lightroom should be doing automatically anyway. At the box, our denoise will be set at 50. We also have raw details, which is it's kind of a sharpening. So it is sharpening our image as well. And super resolution. Now currently we can't pick super resolution because denoise is selected. We have to deselect denoise and then we can select super resolution. And that is going to upscale our image, which typically I don't do, but that option is there for you. Down here, we have an estimated time of how long it will take to process the image. And we have an option here called create stack. What this is doing is when you click on the denoise and when you process the denoise, it will create a new file, a new DNG file that has the denoise applied to it. So what I like to do, I like to keep that stacked so that all of my images that I've done any denoise to is stacked. So look at it here, at 50, it's not quite doing the job. We're gonna bump this up to 75. There we go. And that's looking, actually, that is looking quite nice. You are gonna have trouble noticing this with the YouTube compression. If you have access to a 4K monitor, switch it to 4K, you're gonna have a better bit rate. You might be able to see the uh, the difference there. But let's uh, let's click Enhance and see what that does. You can see up the top left-hand corner, we are processing that file and it is creating a new DNG image 
using all of the AI resources available. It's studying our original raw image and it's creating a new image with less noise in. Now it doesn't work with all raw formats. It doesn't work with Apple ProRes images because it doesn't work with their format, but it will work with most standard raw formats, which is what we are using here. So let's take a look at this now and you can see there, look how clean that is. Let me come back to the original one. You can see here is our unedited one and here's our denoise. You can see it's cleaned up that noise very nicely. We still have the fine details in the hairs and we have no artifacting around the hairs. I'm going to go back and look at the ISO 100 image and it is just as clean as the ISO 100 image. That is an absolute fantastic result and I'm really happy that you can now do this natively within Lightroom, within my workflow and I don't have to pay a third party subscription just to have noise removal. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this image now. It's going to be very quick, couple of minutes edit, that's all it is. But I am going to be using my presets and my macro assistant actions. Check the links in the description if you want to get access to those. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just crop this image a little bit. I'm going to paste the spider's eyes on the rule of thirds. And then I'm going to apply a preset called Bungie. This works very well for male jumping spiders. And again, this is from my Macro Presets 2021. There's a link in the description if you want to check out those presets and help support the channel. For Lightroom, I'm pretty much finished in Lightroom now. I am a Photoshop boy. I like Photoshop. So we're going to go into Photoshop now and we're going to edit this image. We're going to go to Photo, Editing, Adobe Photoshop. And I'm going to quickly use my Macro Assistant actions to edit this image. Now the Macro Assistant actions, they are currently in a beta format and you can access them by going onto my Patreon and subscribing to the 10 pound or more tiers. That will give you access to the actions download and it also helps to support my work and it is much appreciated. So let's take a look at what we need to do here. So I made a bit of a boo-boo here because I was focusing on just getting uh, high ISO images. I forgot to turn off my overhead light, which is causing a catch light here. And I'm going to use these actions now to quickly remove that catch light. So first of all, I'm going to open up my actions. I'm going to come to this option, part one, create group for removing dirt and debris. We just need to click play on that. And now it says, using the patch tool, circle the areas of dirt or debris you want to remove, then press F2. It's as simple as that for removing dirt and debris. So I'm going to select the patch tool. I'm going to select these um, highlights. And again, I am doing this very, very quickly. There's two. And the third one. And the last one. And again, like the action said, I'm just going to click F2 to remove those highlights. See how easy that is using this action. There's a little bit of pollen here that I am also going to remove. There we go. And also, if I come down here, I made a bit of a boo-boo here. You see here, this is a gap. Zoom out, you can see there, there's a gap between the dandelion flower. You can see through it and you can see the background. I need to remove that also. So I'm going to come down. I'm going to grab the patch tool again. I'm going to circle around the hole in the flower. And again, I'm going to go F2. And we're going to just remove that just like that. Very easy using the actions. And that's great. Again, we ain't got to deal with covering up the noise because the noise has already been dealt with using Lightroom. My final thing that I'm going to do on this image is just create some sharpening. So I'm going to use my sharpen action. This sharpens the image without causing halos, which is very nice. If you've done any type of sharpening, you know halos can be problematic. And with a white brush, I'm just going to paste this in like that. And the reason the image is a little bit soft is because it's been shot at F14. Again, it was a simple test image, but that is my image done. I will most likely now post this to social media. But coming back to Lightroom, I think now Lightroom has a fantastic noise reduction option. We no longer need to pay for third party noise reduction, which my bank account thanks them for all that. I'm going to be continuing to use the denoise AI option within Lightroom to reduce the noise and grain in my images, particularly when I use a high ISO in those situations when needed. What do you think of the denoise option in Lightroom? Have you used it yet? 
let me know in the comments below. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for their continued support of me and this channel, but that's where I shall leave this video. My name's Stuart Wood, and I'll see you on the next one.